I have begun climbing now and I am heading up to the castle. I've been looking at it pretty much all day. Wherever you are in Barat, you can see it. It's perched on a mountain right next to the old town here. So currently walking up a very steep 10% gradient, I believe, road. And then I'm going to head off into a little track to see if I can make it up there. Is it that way? No, I think that's somebody's garden. It must be up here. Definitely a steep climb, but I've made it to the castle itself. It is much bigger than I thought it was gonna to be, to be honest. It is more of a citadel. I think people actually still live here today. There is a village inside. I'm climbing up now into the, oh yeah, it definitely is quite a lot of, I thought it was just gonna be some kind of abandoned castle, but there is definitely a sign of life here with carpets and rugs either drying or for sale. Okay, let's. Wow, yeah, look at this. This is just as spectacular as what I saw down in the areas near the river. So the steps I took to get up here, the shortcut, brought me into the middle of the castle complex. This now, I've walked up to the main gate. So this is, as you can see, to turn around here quickly, there's a vehicle going through that gate, leaving the castle complex. And it looks like these are ruins, but in pretty good shape. I mean, there are a lot of them left and you can actually just walk all over the ruins, which in most places where you visit the ruins of old castles and buildings, you're not allowed anywhere near them. You just got to view them. There's the outer gate at the top right side of the shot and the inner gate on the left through there. So I've just been walking all over and then into the actual citadel much more than just a castle incredibly enough behind these houses you can see these kind of ottoman style houses that we've seen before in barat down behind them are the ruins of the citadel and some of the even more historical areas of this site the sunlight on those mountains in the distance there what an era i can't believe how quiet it is no tourists about at all apart from me of course some kind of cafe and shop here. Hello, uh, just having a look at the moment. I'll, I'll come back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Wow. Very friendly. Everybody wants to get you in their shops. And it is incredible to see so many handmade clothes and rugs and carpets and all kinds of different bits and pieces. Here's someone that's, has he just done his shopping maybe? Heading back. Hello. Hello. Lovely day. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Video. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> oh. Yes, oh look, yeah, very good. Huh? Oh, maybe I... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow, what, what is that? Oh, thank you. Oh. What, what's... Uh, it's like a fig? Fig? Oh. Thank you. 
<laughs> and lots of um, lots of things for sale here. The music, uh, films, videos. Lots of monuments around here. The Church of St. Nicholas from the 16th century. I love these stone buildings. Looks like an out area. Plenty of candles being lit here. I can see the charred remains of the stone Especially in there, look at that. And then there's another church, I believe, here as well. Uh, this looks even more incredible. Built with some kind of red brick in between the stone. This is the church of St. Mary Blanerna. And it's one of the oldest churches built in the city of Barat. Goes back to the 13th to 14th centuries. Incredible to think that way, way back then people were building these magnificent structures and they would definitely stand the test of time still here after all these years and hopefully for many years to come. The castle area where the entrance actually is is much more preserved than the ruins in the citadel at the other side there. I'm at the viewpoint now that I could see from way down in the valley and look at this. These views are just breathtaking. You can see all the way down there across the city of Barat. Down here is the bridge I started out this morning and you can see the Ottoman roofs across the river. Very similar, but from the other direction, the Ottoman houses of Goritza. So the castle and the citadel is actually pretty well preserved, considering how old it actually is. It's just a shame, down there you can see just tons of rubbish just thrown all over the place. That's a real shame because it's such a pretty beautiful area. Looks like someone's just brought a garbage truck up and dumped everything. Around here, I'm currently on the city walls an abandoned Ottoman house. And I was saying earlier, very distinctive due to the traditional brown tiling that you can see on top. Looks like that corner there is about to collapse. The small timber windows, the stone lower part, the white upper part, and timber doors as well. Very distinctive. Has said, I can't believe how large this place is up here. I thought it was just going to be the ruins of a castle a bit like in Kruja. This is much, much bigger, much more uh, preserved as well in various places. Up in the citadel, there are essentially a, a small village of people still living there. Mosques, churches, shops, museums, tradespeople still working away. Bars and restaurants. So it turns out that there's been a castle on this site for thousands of years but it was the fourth century where the current one was actually built. And at the time it was a fairly modest castle that over centuries was added to. Check this out. Little secret passageway all the way down. So it was added to over the centuries. And then in the 13th century, the Byzantine Empire turned it from the castle into a citadel some kind of well looking at that and then from the Byzantine Empire lots of other rulers have added their characteristics and their ideas to the castle and citadel and I think this right here is a mosque that was put in place by the Ottoman Turks I would imagine there are many churches and many mosques here in the citadel and you can actually go into this one actually let's see what's down here oh god this is a little bit steep oh wow oh, oh look at that 
Looks like it's full of water. As I said, this is actually listed as a mosque. It looks more like an underground reservoir. There are some steps here as well that you can get down on, but I don't see any point in that. Just seeing what's in the, on the walls here. Some inscriptions on the walls I can see. I don't know if they're fairly modern. A hole at the top in the roof, that'll be where the water's come from. My goodness, look at that, that is just fascinating. Okay, I think there is another very famous mosque in the area here called the Red Mosque. And that's where I'm gonna try and get to now, just a couple of minutes of walk away. This sign here may have solved the mystery. Taking it, it wasn't a mosque, it was a water cistern. Makes sense, I guess. Okay, let's try and find the Red Mosque. Pretty sure that's the Red Mosque. I know I've got a record for mistaking mosques for water systems, but there's no getting away from this one. Almost certain that that is the famous Red Mosque. Let's go and get a bit closer to it. Not only does the history of this place blow my mind, but also the fact that you can just walk all over it. I mean, I'm currently perched on the roof of part of the castle walking all over the stone walls, the fortifications. Here's the shell of a building, part of the fortress, no doubt. I've been in there and you can literally just walk all over it. They invite you to really. I mean, most places that I've been to, you would have no chance of getting up onto a wall like this and just walking along it. Although in saying that, once you do get up, you have to try and very carefully oh, get down. Uh, we don't want any accidents. Maybe that's, oh, maybe that's why, maybe that's why a lot of these places won't let you stand on the ruins because one, I guess it's not good for preservation. I wouldn't have thought anyway, I'm no expert, but also it can be quite dangerous. It's easy to lose your balance, lose your footing. But, as I said before, it is just stunning the fact that you can come out here and be amongst the ruins. Haven't even made it to the, the mosque yet. I'm trying to figure out how to get down there. I think I might have to go back this way. Ah, look, there we go. If I go along that bit there and down there, that should do it. That's what I'll do. There we go. Just as I was jumping there, I was thinking, please don't collapse. At some point in the past, the roof of this building has collapsed. So I'm guessing it's, it's not the sturdiest of places to be anymore. But that's because these walls and this fortification has weathered wars, battles, fights, all kinds of gunfire, I would have thought, being shot at it. And through the ages, it has done exactly what it's been asked to. There is a sign there for the cafe, which is just behind here. Once it gets dark, which is gonna be in about an hour's time, I have a good mind to go in there and see if they're serving food or even if they're just serving drink. It is still really mild here, actually. It's October 31st today, so Halloween, happy Halloween, but it's certainly not cool. The summer is over, but there is a long autumn. Right, you don't get to the mosque that way. Once again, unfortunately, my sources have let me down. I looked at it, I thought, it's red, it's got to be the red mosque. But it is not. My sources have once again let me down as I show you some of these awesome views behind me there's a sign here at the front of the structure and it says the church of saint trinity i'm guessing built in the 13th 
to 14th centuries. It is a stunning, stunning building, especially considering how old it is. Stay tuned, the search for the Red Mosque continues. Pleased to say I have definitely found it this time. And when I say definitely, I mean 99% certain. Unfortunately, not much of it is left. Looks like there is just one pillar going up and I did pass it earlier and I didn't know what it was. But this is the last remaining remnants of the Red Mosque. This was built apparently before the Ottomans ruled here. So signs that there was a population of Muslims from the Islamic faith long before the Turks arrived. So this I'm sure would have been the walls of the mosque itself. And it looks like if I get a bit closer, looks like you can still get inside part of it. Well, you would be able to if this steel gate wasn't here. There are steps inside. Look at that, you can climb, I would imagine, all the way to the top, or well, certainly most of the way. Incredible. A piece of Albanian history. Well, thanks for watching the video, I think. I am going to just spend the next hour taking a walk around the castle citadel area whilst the sun sets behind the camera and then I'm going to head back into Barat down the hill and check out some of the nightlife but uh, thanks very much for watching the video hopefully you found it helpful maybe useful if you're planning to come here and I will see you in the next video which with a bit of luck will be the seaside resort of Duras, which I'm visiting tomorrow, and then after that, heading back towards Tirana. So plenty still to come from this incredible, fascinating country that is Albania. Mm -hmm.